Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. I am Sam I.B. reporting for Media Speaks. That just rolls off the tongue. Media, excuse me, www.themediaspeaks.com. Make sure you're there. I'm also posting written articles there, and I have one on Bill Gates that is a little different than what you think. Proud to be part of the Media Speaks. Uh, check out the last video that I posted for information concerning that. This is from Infowars.com, and this is dreadful. Before I start this, um, the city Isfahan, I'm probably butchering it, um, has a population of 1,583,609 people, according to Wikipedia. Washington Free Beacon reports radiation leak at Iran's Isfah Isfahan nuke site. It says, Adam Credo, writing for the neocon website The Washington Free Beacon, reports that Iran has evacuated the city of Isfahan due to a radiation leak. Uh, this is InfoWars Kurt Nemo, January 3rd, dated 2012. It's a typo. It was 2013. The website is edited by Matthew, by Matthew Joseph Continetti, who is married to the daughter, is married to the daughter of big league neo tycoon. Not very often that Infowars has this many typos. Believe it or not, it's not me stammering. Married to the daughter of big league neocon Bill Crystal. Adam Credo is the senior writer at Free Beacon and writes for the Washington Jewish Week the Jerusalem Post, the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, and Politico. According to Credo and the Free Beacon, it goes on, Iran issued an edict ordering an evacuation in response to high pollution levels. However, outside observers suspect that the evacuation order may corroborate previous reports indicating that a uranium enrichment facility near Isfahan has been leaking radioactive material I'm not going to just sit here and read this all night, but it is alluded to, go to the article, it's worth, worth seeing, it is alluded to that the Israel, or perhaps covertly the U.S., I, I don't know if the U.S. was in on it or not, who knows, I mean, the, the, way, the way alliances work anymore, who knows? Um, anyway, um, if Israel is somehow a part of this, here's what I had said earlier, and then I have an analogy for you in a second. Um, I was in favor, briefly, of taking out that nuke site if they were going to do it, which you can argue either way. I am against all things nuclear. Having said that, if we can have nuke plants, why can't they? I do think they will use the spent fuel as a dirty bomb, and I do think they would blow up uh, at, it, at Israel if they were able to. Yes, I absolutely believe the Iranian government would do that. Having said that, they are allowed to have a nuclear power plant for peaceful purposes according to international law. And as such, if they were going to bomb this, they needed to bomb it before they started having uranium at the facility. And then I changed my mind, and if YouTube would give me back my videos, at the end of this you'll see a little video on it. I click that real quick, you can help me a lot. Um, I changed my mind and said no, because if you did it, you were going to create a little Chernobyl or a little Fukushima, if you will, that would quickly wash over the entire area. Now, for those of you that don't understand all of the nuclear stuff that I talk about, I have an analogy for you here. There were a couple of videos that I mentioned that uh, Christelle was in charge of uh, safety at the correct views. We're going to see how she does. All right. Let me get this closer for you real quick. That there is Israel. That there is Iran. Okay. Now, over here in Iran is a nuclear power plant. Right there. Israel, arr, they're going to go ahead and take that nuclear power plant out. Now, we're going to use the analogy here. We're going to see how this works in the real world. That's what we're going to see here. Yeah, no. They might not be saying anything. Okay. There we go. Now, this is a really good idea for Israel. Because as you can see, 
there is no chance of this becoming in any way a danger for Israel. No, no, well, maybe. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Christelle, I'm seeing some danger. Are you seeing danger for Israel? Do you people understand now? Thank you, my dear. Do you people understand what you are dealing with when you bomb a nuclear enrichment facility? Good. Show this to your friends and family that don't get it. Oh, my word. Awful news. Absolutely awful news. All right. This is from foxnews.com. And this is good news. Uh, this is somewhat dated now. And I've been hearing that more schools are doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mention this article and then talk in general about the idea. I said that we were taking a break from guns, and we did. But this is a very important issue. And the right to defend ourselves and the fact that a more armed society is a much less violent society, as is statistically proven, without fail... I'm going to point to this article because it matters, and our Second Amendment matters. Texas school district will let teachers carry guns. A tiny Texas school district may be the first in the nation to pass a law specifically allowing teachers and staff to pack heat or when classes begin later this month. Trustees at the Herald Independent School District approved a district policy change last October so that employees can carry concealed firearms to deter and protect against school shootings, provided the gun-toting teachers follow certain requirements. And obviously, they have to get a background check and that kind of thing, which, you know, that's, that's, I'm not necessarily against that. We don't want people having guns that have no idea how to use them. I mean, no matter how pro-Second Amendment you are, let's face it, we don't want that. Um, since then, this has blossomed, uh, it blossomed huge, and there are a number of school districts that are doing this, and I am delighted to see it, because a lot of people may not remember, Columbine had armed guards in it, yes, but when you think about the way that a school district, uh, like, if you're thinking of 1950s, like the Christmas story, that box of a school building, um, you might be able to get to somebody in time, maybe, to prevent a lot of uh, deaths in that circumstance, but you won't be able to do so when schools are set up the way they are now, that are roaming hallways and corridors. And it might be a good idea to have, it is a good idea, to have teachers armed. And if you don't think so, then just remember that President Obama's daughters have 11 armed guards at their school. Now, I don't want anything to happen to his children. What I'm saying is, isn't it also imperative that nothing happens to your children? All right, friends, this is, uh, I predicted it again. I mean, I, I'm starting to get a very high prediction rate here, and that sucks. I'd like to be wrong because these things are terrible. <sighs> Not a psychic, friends. I just, you see the puzzle, you put the puzzle together. Hundreds die in cold waves. Media keep flogging global warming. This is from the New American, William F. Jasper. Man-made global warming is going to kill us all. Well, we are freezing to death in record numbers. Listen to this. Go read this article, too. The planet has not warmed up, not a bit, um, in the last couple of years. Also, remember uh, the, uh, the Hurricane Sandy that swept Obama back into office? Well, that's not unusual. Do you know the 19, I'll get to it here in a minute, I think the 1930s had worst, worst storm season ever? True. Listen to this. For much of the world, 2012 is going out the way that it came in with a deadly cold wave leaving hundreds dead in its wake. Here are but a few of the chilling headlines from across the globe. I'm not going to read where all these are from. It's in the article. I, giving you this many, uh, this many sources would bore you to death, and you're going to click right off. Cold wave in northeast India claims over 40 lives. A record cold grips vast area of Asia. China sees temperatures drop to negative 37 degrees Celsius. Cold War, bitter winter weather kills hundreds in Eastern Europe, Russia. Numerous Japanese cities reached record lows as freezing temperatures persist. You want more? Good, we got more. 
Planets warming right up here. As a matter of fact, East Europe's bitter cold spell kills 300. And if that's not warm enough for you, down to negative 50 degrees Celsius, Russians freeze to death as strongest in decades winter hits. This is some real warm news here. Heavy snowfall keeps Balkans in deep freeze. Tens of thousands of holiday travelers stranded as wild weather heads east. And last but not least, a blizzard warning stretch for 300, 730 continuous miles due to winter storm Euclid. I'll give you that source. You know, nobody important, just the Weather Channel. Man-made global warming is a lie. And I've been saying it all along. Agenda 21 is Agenda 666. And if you don't know what it is, go look up Agenda 21. You will be repelled. Most of the so-called so mainstream media, though, are stuck into their global warming groove and are determined to stay there, ostensibly ignoring the scientific evidence that shows their alarmist predictions to be spectacularly wrong. They also have downplayed, totally ignored, or att attempted to explain away the fact that for several winters in a row, much of the world has been struck with deadly cold waves. And they do this all the time. They love to say that there's extreme weather. Well, let's look at uh, down the article a little bit, shall we? Let's see if we're having the worst weather ever right now. But is the world truly experiencing unnatural extreme weather, it asks. Uh, happily, the answers are no. The New American reported recently, there is no scientific empirical evidence that droughts, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, and other extreme events are any more frequent or any more intense in recent years than in times past. Want some proof for that? Got it. Real science then reproduced the graphs and data from the Global Historical Climate Network stations to show that 1936 was indeed a much hotter year during a time when CO2 levels were much, much lower. There's more. I'm going to read you one more just because I, I love proving these global warming idiots to be just that. Absolutely all but brain dead. Regarding the continuously repeated false claim that recent hurricanes in Tropical Storm Sandy are unprecedented, Anthony Watts at WhatsUpWithThat.com charges, <clears throat> quote, Next time somebody tries to tell you Hurricane Sandy was an unprecedented East Coast hurricane, show them this. And this that he refers to is a NOAA graphic of the U.S. Eastern Seaboard plotting the paths of nine H3 and H4 category hurricanes that hit the region in 1951 and 1960. People, it is as plain as day. Man is not warming the planet. I would love to see less gas and oil being burnt because I think that that is leading to lung cancers and things like that. But it is not warming the planet, and it certainly is not a good idea where we should be building nuclear power plants to stop it. Or do I need to get out more paper and lighters? Steve Watson, Infowars.com, and Texas cops cite gangs as justification for unconditional checkpoints. In a practice that officials acknowledge has been ongoing for more than a year now, they acknowledge they're breaking the law, nice cops, Cops in Texas are setting up roadside checkpoints and photographing suspects citing gang culture as justification. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Go look at it. I'm going to give it to you in the correct views uh, terms. How's that? It's okay to pull over people and then get their tattoos and get their gang affiliations. Because we all hate gang members and we all think that they're pieces of human filth. Okay. How about when they pull over other people? I'm in the band passing time. Maybe they're going to look at my tattoo on my leg. And, hey, we're going we're to document this. And then whenever we see this around, the government will know your movements. Well, and that's not okay. But and it's not you. You know, it's not you. They come after more and more people all the time. And they start with people that we all hate. Gangbangers, thugs, killers, rapists, murderers. Okay. They use that to come after our rights. 
How can you not see this? And gangbangers, let me ask you something. No, no, shut, shut that garbage hip-hop off and listen to me for a minute. I'm on your side in one instance. You, you should not be forced to have your tattoos photographed by law enforcement. However, maybe if you're going to sell crack, maybe if you're going to go ahead and sell some coke, maybe you shouldn't look exactly like the media says that you should look. Looking like a thug and looking like a G. Maybe you should get a nice short conservative haircut that I don't have. Then again, I'm not selling crack. Maybe it would be a real good idea to try to pick up some normal job somewhere just so that you have some kind of an alibi. Maybe it would be good to not look like the media says that a drug dealer looks like. I'll tell you, the trouble is I heard that there were 20% of the American population is functionally illiterate. I'm willing to go as high as 25 people. I, I think it's more than 20. And let me tell you something else. People, people can't see things anymore. People are not able to think outside of what they are instructed to think. And that's scary. That's really, really scary. Two more, th uh, one more thing I want to get to. A business insider, I, want, I love this story. I hope it's not turned into some eugenics genocidal nightmare for everyone. Doctors save a little girl's life by reprogramming the HIV virus to fight cancer cells. Drug company Novartis is betting $20 million on a cancer treatment that seems to have saved a little girl's life, according to a report from the New York Times' Dennis, Denise Grady. Just last spring, six-year-old leukemia victim Emma Whitehead was near death, having gone through chemotherapy twice without success. But then her parents put Emma on an experimental treatment at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They infected her with a version of HIV reprogrammed to attack cancer cells. Whitehead almost died, but the treatment worked, and now she's in remission and doing cartwheels all over the house. God bless her! Gordy says that the treatment, though, has not worked for all patients. It worked completely on three adults. Four treated adults have merely improved. A child relapsed. The treatment failed two adults completely. Here's the thing, though. Each of these patients was in a hopeless case before trying the treatment. So any success is huge. And I'm gonna, that's just important. Don't just gloss over that. And I'll tell you why. When my dad was deathly, deathly sick because he did not get his routine checkups done, which I'm begging all of you to do, um, he had never routine gallbladder surgery and didn't know that it was cancer and it killed him. Well, when he was about to die, we were going to try this, we were saving money to try and get him to Hanover, Germany for what's called hyperthermia. If you don't know what that is, uh, look up uh, Hanover hyperthermia and uh, Peter Wolf, that's the doctor. Key, keyword search those, it'll come right up. We were going to fly him all the way to Germany because when someone has stage four cancer, there isn't much that you can do other than say goodbye. Um, Prove true, we couldn't get him there in time. Um, even if we had been millionaires, we, he wasn't healthy enough to have gone. However, my point being, when someone is on death's door, here's another option. And if it kills them, you tried. They might get up and walk again. Just like the article I did a little while ago that talked about paralyzed people walking. I think I did it the day or two before Christmas. Look it up. You're listening to The Correct Views. I am Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Thank you for listening. Please donate if you can because every penny that you give me goes to better gear for this show. Good night, friends. God bless. Thanks for listening.